Okay, I have started the recording. Before moving forward, uh, do we have any doubts? So quiz one, two, three. Oh, sorry, assign assignment one, two, three. Solutions are out. You can check if you have any doubts regarding that, and you can uh, put the doubts in discussion forum. <coughs> So I am going again today also I will be going slow only and uh, we would be discussing uh, extended, Hamilton, uh, extended Hamilton principle in detail and we would be solving lots of questions regarding that. Just check my voice audio is there. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, whoever is new to uh, these classes, I am actually making a comic series, and uh, I am relating uh, Batman with um, something called order. Uh, one who makes order into the system, or uh, is the actual hero of the system, and so what happened that. I actually relate the concepts using some characters and in that way we can easily understand that those characters. So today I will be introducing a new character, this big person called Bane. <coughs> Before moving forward, today is 25th February, today is 4th class and as uh, the course is progressing, I think week 5 uh, data is also out so you can solve week 5 also. Apart from that, uh, its date uh, deadline is uh, 1st March, so uh, it is just a couple of days ahead. So you can opt those. You have to just uh, watch the videos, and if you have any doubt, you can put in the discussion forum or you can contact me. And for today's class, I will be uh, continuing with extended Hamilton principle only, and uh, we would be starting the solution part from next class in detail so my aim is to cover as many as questions as we can to completely understand the uh, topic so my way of teaching uh, i'm experimenting on uh, putting things together so making instead of boring question i'm just putting some interesting story so if someone who has a uh, problem with stories so they can directly come to the uh, question so there is no part no uh, worry regarding that um, so let's see so uh, i will be covering up to lecture five but if you have any doubt after that also you can ask right away we will try to solve it but it will be better if we solve it uh, with complete understanding afterwards So today we will be just covering extended Hamilton principle. Okay, so so every comics I introduce some characters. So those are the villains of uh, Gotham City, and as we know that uh, villains are made, uh, very much compared with the uh, psychotic person. So psychology is of importance here. So why the person is such as uh, he or she is. Uh, like that and for that I relate it with nonlinear dynamics and because linear dynamics means if you have provided the input you can know how much the output can vary but in nonlinear system if you have provided the input the output can vary a lot okay. so it's called uh, sensitivity to the initial conditions and these characters are also analogous in that sense so they have they have all gone through the same process of living but their initial part of their life have been so much chaotic that they had inherited the properties of the nonlinear uh, dynamics so for example today's character psychology is complex and multifaceted means having lot of uh, different character uh, inside uh, dilemmas shared by his experiences and unique circumstances of his life. He was born and raised in a prison. So it is actually part of uh, Batman's second movie in which 
uh, Bane is introduced. So he he was born and raised in a prison. So he was always in the dark, and where he learned to survive through strength and cunning. So he uh, he was subjected to experiment with some drug, and which greatly enhanced his physical abilities, but also left him addicted. So hence uh, it was like he was filling up his hole in the heart, but with some um, addiction. So where this addiction come from is he was. Uh, every time he was put the same thing there and uh, so as a result of his upbringing and experiences Bean uh, developed a strong sense of self-reliance so it is good so as the Batman also went through the same process so also he has a belief in his own powers and abilities so yeah a person should have that and he is highly intel intelligent and strategic as you will know in the coming part able to outmaneuver his opponents through careful planning and tactical thinking so he is um, cunning of sorts but a uh, better word would be intelligent so he is not only reliable on the brute strength but also um, tactical thinking however he is also flawed and vulnerable he is only flawed because of the drug the addiction so with a strong desire to control and power that sometimes cloud his judgment and lead him down a destructive path. So this is the background of Bane. And uh, the major thing about Bane is a drug called Venom. And it has a it has an influence in such a way that his behavior and decisions are uh, they are reliant on the drug for also for their physical uh, abilities. And uh, so if he couldn't get Venom, he is very uh, weak person. But as he have that, so he get the sense that this has power, and hence it reflects his need for control and power as he seek to maintain his strength and dominance over other at all cost. So actually, this is the circumstances, and overall, Bane's uh, psychology is characterized by the complex interplay of strength, intelligence, and addiction. So addiction actually introduced a problem here, otherwise he would have been a Batman. So hence the vulnerability. His experience and circumstances have shaped his worldview and behavior in a unique and often unpredictable ways. So unpredictable is the again the uh, point of reference as uh, discussed in previous comics. So that's what make non-linear events so special. Make him a for formidable adversary for Batman and compelling characters in Batman universe. So this is part of uh, second movie. Now we will start with our uh, this comics. So I have introduced the character Bane and his drug called Venom. So the street of Gotham City was no stranger to chaos and conflict. We are referring to many different non-linear villains. But the arrival of Bane shook the city to its very core. With his brute strength and cunning intellect, Bane possessed a threat unlike any that Batman has faced before. So as the Dark Knight set, up, uh, set out to stop Bane and restore order as he is the order to the city, he quickly realized that this was not going to be a simple matter of overcoming a linear adversary. So in the world of nonlinear dynamics, system are often described as complex interconnected network of feedback loops and interaction. So there will be internal couplings and so because of the functions which are uh, not linear, there will be internal couplings and there will be something increasing or something dying off. So th that is the part where um, these nonlinear dynamics come into the picture. So just like in Gotham City, the system can be highly unpredictable with small changes in one part of the system leading to large and unexpected effects elsewhere. In the case of Batman and Bane, their conflict was not simply a matter of Batman using his superior strength and agility to defeat Bane in a linear. So if you are talking uh, face to face fight, then it's called a linear fight like um, you are fighting in fa with fair means. So one on one battle, but instead the outcome of their conflict was shaped by the wide variety of factors, including the surrounding environment, the action of other individual and groups, 
and feedback loops created by their own action and reactions. So to succeed in this nonlinear conflict, Batman would need to rely on his intelligence. That is the main part of the comics. Uh, his adaptability and his ability to navigate complex systems. He would need to understand how small changes in one part of the system could have far-reaching effects elsewhere and would need to be prepared to adjust his strategy at a moment notice in response to unexpected developments. In short, he would need to be a master of nonlinear dynamics that we are doing now, able to navigate the complex system that governed the battle between himself and Bane. So as they will fight, uh, the fate of the city hung in the balance. That too also is in Nightbreed Comics it does. So would Batman be able to outmaneuver his nonlinear adversary and restore order to the city, or would Bane prove to be too unpredictable and too complex a foe to overcome? Okay, let's see what happens. So, so this is the final check. If you have any doubt, you can ask away. Then. Uh, regarding code structure or anything so last class i had covered something hi 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 rahul hmm. hi good evening hmm. okay so so you got the uh, solutions I think week one, week two, week three solutions are out. So have you seen the solution, like the detailed solution? Okay. Okay, please check that and uh, if you have any doubt in specific step, please get back to me or uh, put in the discussion forum. Okay. Oh. Yeah, uh, I have, uh, I have, okay, I will give you a WhatsApp number. So, so this is my WhatsApp number. Uh, just message me, okay? Okay, any uh, specific doubt on the uh, course content or maybe which is bothering you, why it's happening, when it's happening? Ha huh, so uh, lectures are so this lecture or the sir's lecture <laughs> okay sir's lecture okay hmm. yeah they are little bit different but uh, but after some point they will get together like uh, for example putting matlab into the picture or putting symbolic toolboxes into the picture that's let's take a little bit of effort so i kind of you have to know the things beforehand then you, you have to move forward so next class i will be basing it on matlab only so uh, so uh, where do you find more difficulties like the, okay I, I i i also feel that questions are a little bit different from the um, exercises or oh sorry the lectures but what exactly do you, can you uh, give more insight to it Hmm. Hmm. Okay. 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 So uh, I think half the co half the questions are about computational. Are you getting problem in that? okay so yeah so uh, for that next class i will be taking fully matlab like uh, where the problems are because that is the part i have uh, untouched up till now because uh, i was thinking of uh, finding a pattern into the course okay so next time i will be sharing uh, matlab as well as um, any part in that which is uh, which are asked in the assignment because in further part of the courses also these will come okay so we will do it beforehand. All right. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. Mm. So today we will be doing that equation of motion. 
so there are three methods one is uh, by newton's law and then there is langridgian equation of motion and third is which we are uh, covering today so this will complete our equation of motion finding and also the boundary condition so let's see okay okay so hence i am going slowly because actually i didn't want to uh, put everything into one big box and then because uh, it takes time to adjust into the settings so hence <coughs> okay so our question here was um, so we are starting the extended hamilton principle so we are we would be finding equation of motion on that and uh, now uh, i have put questions in form of a story or it is a part of the story so now what happens that batman and bane are fighting each other so they are uh, both are physically very uh, dominating so hence they are into direct fight and batman and bane were locked in intense struggle e determined to come out on top the stakes were high as they battled not just for victory but for very fate of gotham city now as they grappled batman spotted us opening in bane's defenses his pipes were following physics now uh, bane how the character is if i will go to uh, one of this yeah so in this figure you can see he is connected with some pipes okay and actually these pipes are connected to the tank which is uh, this so these tanks are there some other color so these tanks okay so these tanks have a drug called venom and that is being injected to his skull and other part of the body hence uh, he is getting uh, this much power so that is there and these pipe follow physics okay so and that physics is following a function so there is a functional i uh, integral of a functional and it is in only one independent variable as shown so it is just continuation of the previous uh, previous class question on calculus of variation so if you have a functional of u so u is function x is independent variable and uh, u is u which is a function of x is a function or it's also called dependent variable now we have i of u this is functional or integral of a functional actually functional is this part this part so this is functional okay so now what is asked is we have to find this first variation to optimize the path and that we are doing by taking this delta operator and once we take this delta operator we know how it behave using the rules which were discussed previously so i am just revising the concept so del can go inside and outside of a differential and uh, integral also the function of p a function of x such as px and qx uh, act like a constant to it and uh, what else hmm 
and here p is one more constant so what happens is del just go inside but if there is a function of u just as u square here okay so what happens to this is this is converted into 2u so if we talk about del of u square is 2u del u okay so this gives us this answer so batman was able to find the optimal point to hit pin spike using this relationship uh, which was providing the venom and bane however was not so easily defeated because yeah it's a nonlinear uh, adversary so he too had studied the intricacies of mathematical theory and was able to quickly anticipate batman moves so he has actually designed the pipe in two independent variable so instead of only x there is x and y both so we have two independent variables now which are x and y and again u is there and v is there u is also a function of x and y both and v is also a function of x and y both so these are dependent variables so two dependent variables two independent variables okay and uh, q is constant and p and q are again function of x and y but here dependent variables are this like uh, p and q are functions but our main point is u and v so we have to optimize into those part so what is happening here as you can see so it's a product rule so this thing act as a constant and this uh, the this thing is having product rule in it so hence this is a product rule okay and i think other things are understood so as they faced off once again both fighter knew that struggle was far from over the fight had become a battle not just of physical strength but of intellectual prowess as well with the fate of gotham city hanging in the balance there was no room for error it was a fight that would require all of their skills both physical and mental to emerge victorious so yes the fight goes on okay so once we have re revised the calculus of variation because we would be using delta operator a lot in this class and delta operator the property the delta operator are very important so if you have not done this you please go to the previous uh, lecture and just observe what the rules of uh, operating with the delta operator is and how it can uh, come inside outside how it behaves with a function of independent variables or if there is solely that thing uh, independent variable then what happens so it's a mix of differential and uh, properties as well as the algebraic properties okay as batman and bane clashed once again they found themselves uh, grappling over an elastic bar the bar was under tension and its axial motion would determine the outcome of their str struggle so at batman and bane grapple they found themselves struggling over a elastic bar with a spring attached to one side the bar was under tension <coughs> and the presence of spring added an additional layer of complexity to their fight now bane tried to use the spring to his advantage pulling the bar with all his might and attempting to manipulate the spring to give him an edge but batman always the master of physics knew that he had to take the spring into account in order to him emerge victorious so we have a axial bar so axial bar and then at one part a spring is also attached so i don't have any extraction for a spring so let's see this is a spring 
so like this a spring is attached okay at one end this end okay and both are pulling the uh, grappling the the whole thing so with quick calculation batman determined the equation of motion using hamilton dynamics and used the knowledge to his advantage so let's do that so this is the case so we have a bar having model of velocity e as well as cross section area a both constant and uh, it is having force fx due to the uh, 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 pulling action and uh, at x equal to l we observed that there is a spring attached of spring constant k now we have to determine equation of motion so the it has only three rules first rule is find t v okay then write hamilton's principle and find equation of motion and boundary condition so here when we are applying hamilton principle there is a use of delta operator so only these three steps are there to solve or to find equation of motion and this this method is by far the best method to find equation of motion we will know why in just couple of minutes okay so this is step 1 step 2 step 3 okay so let's start with step 1 finding t and b so let say u is a axial displacement of the bar now x is a independent variable and uh, u which is a function of x as well as t is uh, x as well as t is also independent variable okay so x is space so in this direction and t is time how in time is also changing that is also of importance here because here comes the extended hamilton principle if it had been a hamilton principle it is just the balance of the energy or the uh, balance of the hamilton total energy but when since we are talking about extended hamilton principle that means the time it, it we are talking about in dynamics so how it's varying with time so hence the name come extended hamilton principle it comes from the uh, time varying action so how action is created so action is some uh, uh, quantity which in dynamics it represents uh, energy with respect to time okay so u is our dependent variable and what else uh, okay so now we will find the kinetic kinetic energy in the system so kinetic energy will be only due to the mass in the system so we know that stiffness has uh, negligible mass so only mass is coming due to the bar and which can be given by this expression half mv square or m means like half rho by 2 square or rho half uh, rho and then uh, the displacement velo uh, velocity actually displacement velocity over a unit volume so how much that will be so in term of It will be rho a by two divided by two square. What I have done just I have uh, set it for the um, the volume instead of volume integral. I have converted into a line integral. Now potential energy due to steam energy stored in the bar. So there will be two uh, potential energy. one is due to 
strain energy is stored in the bar and another is due to the linear spring so due to strain energy you can check out uh, it's like uh, basics of our structural dynamics or uh, the basic course so it's like strain energy is half into stress into strain or into like volume volumetric so we will again convert it into square okay now there is one more potential energy which is stored in form of a linear spring and that doesn't have a integral term it will have a so u at l whatever the displacement will be which is unknown for now that should compress with respect to k so half k x square we would have uh, the spring uh, potential energy so that is here so total potential energy is just summation of it thing here to work now as you can see there is one green force fx right so that is the external force and there will be work done by this external distributed load fx which is provided by the uh, tension force by the batman and the bane which will be equal to this okay so now we can state hamilton principle which is so here are time time coordinate like between two time instances del of t minus del of v plus del of w into dt should be equal to 0 so this is our actually extended hamilton principle and uh, let's define terms so this is first term this is second term third term Bottom. So you can see here uh, all the terms integral uh, sorry the variation of it is here so let's start with the first term that is t1 to t2 del t dt which will be equal to this is one term and uh, if you will apply uh, 
properties of delta operator you will observe that this delta can go inside and how much inside so these will be counted as constant and this will be 2 del u by del t ok and del of del u by del t now we know that del can come inside so this will be equivalent to Yeah, now we will use integration by part. Okay, del came inside. Now we will use integration by parts. So integration by parts is the essential thing in uh, Hamilton's principle. Okay, short of space. So the integration by parts will lead us to so what we'll do we will take this outside and then this inside you will come outside and whatever is left we will write it here rho a del u by del t del u oh, uh, this is region of u then now here uh, so when we are defining extended Hamilton principle, we also know that u or del u at t1 and t2 are known. So hence this becomes 0. So in this whole expression will become 0. Now we will move on to second term. minus t1 t2 del v dt equal to so this is a huge expression df so we have combined second term plus third term
so now we will take del inside and then uh, do integration by parts so we will take del inside So wherever the square is, we are just replacing it with uh, two of that function property of delta operator. And now we will use uh, integration by pi, integration integration by parts. Okay. So it will end in All the tools will be getting, uh, all the half will be getting cancelled by the tool. So we can write this in a neat way. L and then this is function of del of u of l now del of u is not equal to del of u of l okay it will be one more term del u of 0 Next, we will observe that what happens to del u at 0. So, del u at 0 means at this point. At this point, we know that no matter what happens, that will be cantilevered. So, hence, it is fixed. So, that is 0. So, this becomes 0. So, this becomes 0. And now third term a fourth term sorry
photon was del w dt t1 t2 are uh, instances in time so it are it is they are the arbitrary instances okay some net connection problem is there let me reconnect again take some time yes, two minutes it's working now Okay, mm, it was the fourth term, and fourth term had a distributed force F. So upon substitution upon substitution where in this equation Hamilton's principle I will just put all the terms so this was the first term then second term second and third were combined and these are this and then finally the t uh, fourth term was this now upon just analyzing the whole thing we can observe some fact first of all uh, here del u is common del u is common and del u is common okay then these three this one this one this one and this one are integral and the which is left is not integral okay so whatever are the integral are equation of motion and whatever is left 
इट्स एन एडिशनल कंडीशन विच इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड नेचुरल बाउंड्री कंडीशन नाउ इन इन वेन यू आर यूजिंग न्यूटन लॉ ऑफ न्यूटन इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन वी यूज वी काइंड ऑफ पुट दीज बाउंड्री कंडीशन इन टू एक्शन बट वॉट हैपन दैट ऑन ऑल्सो इन लैंग्वेजियन वी हैव टू टेक केयर ऑफ द कंस्टेंट बट हेयर इफ यू गिव टी एंड वी एक्सप्रेशन वी कैन एग्जैक्टली नो वॉट दोज कंडीशन आर विदाउट गोइंग इन टू टू मच डिटेल सो दिस इज फार दिस इज द बेस्ट दिस मेक इज द बेस्ट मैथड ओके just there is there, there should be a use of delta operator so i will just complete the solution so what i will do i will just club all the integral terms these are the additional terms x equal to l del u of l now whole thing into dt so this gives us equation of motion This is our equation of motion, and with an additional condition, which is called natural boundary condition. is that ta del u by del x plus k of u at x equal to l equal to u so if you will observe what this statement means is k of u at x equal to l is equal to ea del u by del x at x equal to l that means at x equal to l something interesting is happening what is happening here is whatever is force coming from this side is equal to whatever force is coming from this side so this is very trivial uh, thing but it's a action reaction pair but that is that is inherently showing in this equation of motion okay so hence these methods are much more have much more significance than the previous methods so why using this with this quick calculation not so quick so batman determined the natural frequency of the bar spring system and used the knowledge to his advantage so if time permits we will be doing in our successive classes how to find natural frequency of distributed system now he applied the precise amount of force to the bar causing the system to vibrate in such the right, such in just the right way to throw bane off balance as bane struggled to regain his footing batman continued to apply force to the system using the spring to his advantage and keeping bean off balance 
and then with a final decisive blow he delivered a strike that sent bane reeling so it it looks like bane is losing but suddenly he increased his dose and he found himself getting the upper hand he lifted up batman and struck batman's back which was idolized as a beam with a attached mass causing it to bend under the force of the blow so this happened this happened so batman grimacing in pain knew that he had to act fast in order to turn the tide of the fight with a quick calculation he determined the critical load that the beam could withstand or his backbone could withstand and used that knowledge to his advantage so so now what we are doing is we have we understood abstraction and we have extracted batman as this beam so backbone of the batman as this beam and f of xt which is in red is the uh, pain caused by the bane so also uh, there is attached uh, mass uh, which is batman's head or the distribution of uh, batman so what he is, is trying to do is finding the boundary conditions at which uh, he can get away from this uh position so we can idealize that beam with a ei as a flexural rigidity l as the length of this whole uh, uh, backbone and m as the mass density of this backbone now the bar is subjected to distributed force uh, i think there will be beam mass ml is attached to one end and uh, the beam is free at the other end determine the equation of motion for the beam okay so this is the other end of the beam and this is kind of mass m now w i am uh, taking as a uh, derived uh, quantity so uh, dependent variable so what we will do we will determine the equation of motion using our hamilton's principle extended hamilton's principle so for that we have to start with kinetic energy so we will write it for the beam as well as the mass so beam has distributed mass m and uh, which is mass density and the mass which is attached to one end with x equal to 0 that is ml mass so this is one so the kinetic energy will come from two parts one mass of the beam and the other mass of the ball or mass of the attached mass additional attached mass okay so and potential energy will be ei so this potential energy will be due to bending the flexural rigidity will be square thing now and work done by force will be same as previous I will use Hamilton principle. Then first term, first term means that it is similar. U to L half U to the power T X M L. so yeah here let's see it it does also have the same uh, configuration as the previous one so nothing to worry about if you have any doubt you can ask any time
this whole thing into DT. Where I put this DT? Okay. Uh, moving on now, uh, applying integration by parts. So there are two terms, and we will be applying for both terms integration by parts so let's take this integral outside This is double dot. Okay, so this will become zero as well as this will become zero now second term which is more complicated so t1 to t2 del t i by 2 dx dt zero to l and so you can use symbolic uh, software but again how to tackle with this del operator so one way is you can feed it in such a way that you directly come to equation of motion or there is an inbuilt command for this or you can use this technique this is bracket x on del w means i del w by so we have integrated by part twice here because it is fourth order it won't fit So this is second term and the third term will be now written as t1 t2 something like this t1 
so there is no integration of part in the distributed fold Okay, so equation of motion. Now we can directly take from these terms. So what are the term? Let me just highlight it. One term is this. So one term is this. Another term is this. Then these term and this term. So there are uh, six terms. now equation of motion will be only formed because of the integral so we are, there are two double integral one 0 to l and one t1 to t2 those will be equation of motion This is equation of motion, <coughs> and with now there will be additional con condition, which is known as natural boundary condition. There are four of them. One is E I del two W by del x square, or moment at x equal to zero should be equal to zero. Then del of del x if e i so this is shear force <coughs> so this is also zero shear force should be zero but it is having this mass ml into it moment zero at the other end as well as shear force also zero at the other end okay so how batman shifted his weight is actually dependent on this relationship this was the critical relationship which we finally found out and using this only the batman got protected and he shifted his weight and applied force to the beam in such in just the right way causing it to vibrate and absorb the energy of the beams that uh, throwing off okay so as the be beam resonated so punch nahi hai yahan par there will be i think beams back breaking now as beam resonated the attached mass moved in a way that absorbed the energy of the blow dissipating it harmlessly into the environment now uh, last to last class i have shown you the example of cheetah so why cheetah is so special is because it can store its energy in form of a uh, backbone so bending and then it releases the energy so that is the uh, uh, key concept of why uh, the cheetah is so fast similar thing uh, batman has also applied in the real life and uh, we can see that by shifting of its weight he had made the beam more stronger uh, so being caught uh, off guard by unexpected movement of the beam and the attached mass found himself thrown off balance batman saw this opportunity and delivered a powerful counter attack sending bane tum tumbling to the ground now bane started to flee from the scene and he went inside a tunnel okay so as batman races through the tunnel in the batmobile he was chasing uh, bane he noticed that bane is leaving behind a trail of venom from the pipe attached to his backpack 
now the pipe is acting like a cantilever shaft vibrating torsionally and causing the venom to spill uncontrollably batman realizes that he must act quickly to prevent the venom from spreading throughout the city and breaking havoc with his expertise in torsional dynamics he calculates the amount of torsional deflection it can withstand before breaking using this because if it had been uh, easily breakable then uh, the fluid would have uh, spread more so using the information batman maneuvers the batmobile with precision carefully avoiding the venom and minimizing the vibration of the cantilever shaft with every turn and bump in this road batman adjusted the speed and direction making sure not to exceed the critical speed of the shaft as bane reaches the end of the tunnel batman accelerates and crashes into his vehicle causing bane to lose his balance and drop the backpack with the venom pipe with the danger averted batman apprehend bane again so as you can see this is the pipe going going, uh, going to the bane side and that as uh, the end is broken so and now it's spilling, spilling uncontrollably so now taking at this as a cantilever beam consider this torsional motion of the shaft that is a shaft and uh, with torsional rigidity gj which is a function of x because uh, everything is in move, uh, movement and l is length of the shaft and ip is the mass moment of the inertia per unit length the shaft is subjected to distributed um, twisting moment m x of t so m here is not a mass but moment it is fixed at one end uh, the bane's head and on the other end x equal to l it is open okay so determine the equation of motion of the shaft so a similar routine first you have to find uh, kinetic energy i had in included this question because of the torsional dynamics because sometimes we have trouble so psi psi dot okay according to the figure and the work done by the external moment the disturbance in the road <coughs> so now applying hamilton principle we will write the first term Right, small double point to each point, and my mark one two by two, and ten by by ten t or whole square dx and dt. Which is equal in two. Now we are taking delta, uh, so del operator inside. Now applying. Uh, integration by parts dx dt and del phi plus whatever is left
सेकेंड टर्म very big very print Showing problems. So after this, uh, integration by parts. <coughs> so once we apply integration by parts, So this gives us uh, second term, now third term. So upon substitution, uh, we will get a very huge equation to minimize the size zero L. equal to L now 
ಸಗೋಲು ಒಡ್ಡಿತು ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಅಕ್ವೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೋಷನ್ and the boundary conditions there will be only one boundary condition okay so this gives us the whole solution now let's see what happens uh, hmm. so as batman was near victory bane revealed that he planted explosive uh, some explosive charges at key points along the sea bridge so gotham had a sea bridge and what bane did was he planted bomb just for the backup now batman knows the time is running out to disarm them as he arrive at the bridge batman notices that the main support beam of the bridge are made of a special material actually it's not material it is the iteration of a beam we can made of uh, temoshenko beam which has a complex cross section geometry and is highly resistant to bending and twisting so i think we should cancel all these lines so just temoshenko beam temoshenko beam using his extensive knowledge of structural dynamics Batman quickly analyzes the behavior of the Timoshenko beam and devises a plan to disarm the explosive before it's too late. Now, what happens in uh, Timoshenko beam is plane cross section that are normal to the longitudinal axis before deformation no longer remain normal to the deformation. So, if uh, this is uh, yeah, so if I this example this is a Uh, part of a beam and if i said it is bending and it's bending such a way this cross section remains uh, plane so like it it is bent like that and the cross section is normal to it so then it's called um aller bernali beam but if this thing has a shear like it it has shear such as this blue line here in the figure so then uh it's called aller bernali beam which is normal but if it is not normal or is having an angle so then it's called a timoshenko beam so there is one more degree of freedom introduced in the whole thing and uh, so we are considering a simply supported timoshenko beam where k is shear correction coefficient and g is the shear modulus and a is the area of cross section and ei is the bending stiffness also i is the rotation inertia rho is density l is length of the beam now assume these quantities do not vary along the length of the beam as the bridge usually are so the transverse deflection and shear rotation are denoted by so there are two degree of freedom one is w which is transverse deflection same as the bending of the beam and this psi which is uh, the angle which is uh, just opposite of the aller bernali beam 90 degree so note that these two independent distributed degree of freedom so note it now the strain energy of the beam is given so let's say this is a given for this is this you can derive by the way but otherwise it have been very complex and also you can observe it is a non linear equation of its own because there is a square term uh, so the kinetic energy of the beam which includes rotational inertia is given by now we have to determine the equation of motion corresponding and also corresponding boundary condition using hamilton principle so that is our job now to find timoshenko beam 
equation of Timoshenko B. Okay, let's start. We will start with the strain energy. B is equal to half zero to L E I plus K K G del x minus y dx so this is one so it's already given and kinetic energy Okay, the work done. By the external load. Which will be zero. Now, Hamilton's principle. So what we will do now, we will uh, take all these terms So this term and this term And first we will open uh, a hole and here will be T1, T2 DT So if we put del inside so this thing will be converted into I will write down E I del psi I del x. So in this by del x.
Salt two will get cancel again. Okay. So there will be two terms. One will be having del of this, and then there will be another term. Oh, I was getting confused because of this. Okay. Del of just the blue. No, sorry. <coughs> So this dx and So this let's say this is term four. This is term three. Uh, this is term two, which include this as well as this. This is term one. So now what we will do? We will do four integration by parts, starting with term one. Just rewrite the term one. So this is term one roughly. Huh, this is term one, and <coughs> so it will have two integration by parts. Oh, and one integration by part only because uh, second order. Second order requires two degree of uh, so two integration by part. Two L zero two L two X D I by del by del X space left key. Dx and then whole dt. So this is term one. Moving on to term two. This is term two.
एक डी टी तो सिमिलर बिहेवियर change mm, here we will minus mm, minus here these and this will become zero because del w at e to d1 is zero because it's known upon substitution what will happen that uh, we will get everything into one whatever we are doing is distributed uh, systems we can uh, easily tackle uh, degree of freedoms also multi degree of freedom problems also so i had actually prepared lot of examples but we are uh, running short on time so what i will do i will complete all those exercises and then upload its solution so it is various uh, problem and every everything has a batman story to hit so yeah so don't get bothered about batman story those are just to maintain the interest in the class uh, you all can just solve the question and get over with it fine by me So this uh, gives us uh, governing equation of motion.
okay this is the first equation but it will be kind of coupled with some uh, one more equation so so you can see psi and w both are independent coordinates and boundary conditions so uh, there will be since a simply supported beam so hence there will be essential boundary condition this is one of the essential boundary condition this is other essential boundary condition and for natural boundary condition we'll be having uh, and this becomes zero so this becomes zero <coughs> so these are the natural boundary conditions Now uh, he carefully climbs up the bridge and uses his specialized equipment to measure the vibration of the beam caused by the explosive charge. Using this information, he calculates the natural frequency and mode shape for Timoshenko beam so, and he determines the location of the explosive charge. So Batman now carefully applies strategically placed loads on the beam, taking advantage of its unique properties to control its vibration and avoid any resonance with the explosive charge. After several tense moments, Batman is able to disarm, so it was really tense, so uh, Batman is able to disarm all the charges and save the bridge from certain destruction. With this expertise in Timoshenko beam, Batman proved once again and he can outsmart even the most cunning villains, being is sent to the Gotham Asylum. So this actually ends uh, the problem of Batman and Bane but Bane will reappear again okay so now on a separate scenario like on the other day or something Batman is flying his bat plane high above Gotham City when he notices that the engine at the end of its wing so these are the engines so engine at the end of his wing has begun to malfunction so he quickly realizes the weight of the engine is causing his wing to bend and twist as he know that he must act fast before disaster strikes using this extensive knowledge of aeronautics and structural dynamics batman carefully analyzes the behavior of the tapered cantilever beam wing with a tip mass and devises a plan to safely land his plane he takes advantage of unique properties of the beam, carefully applying control inputs to compensate for the wing's bending and carefully monitors his plane's vibration to ensure that he remains within the safe limit. After several tense moments, Batman is able to safely land his plane and make the necessary repairs to his engine with, this, with his expertise in aeronautics and structural dynamics 
batman prove once again that he can handle even the most challenging situation in the sky so this is our idealized uh, batman uh, bat wing oh sorry bat plane bat plane and then length is this so it's a tap tapered cantilever beam with a tip mass and the mass of the engine is m now flexural rigidity ei is now function of x and the cross section area of the wing is also given as follow that is also changing the density of the wing at any location is equal to rho the potential energy of the tapered beam is given by a uh, simple expression as this which is already done in the previous uh, previous previous question previous the bending was there the kinetic energy of the tapered beam is given by this you have to determine the equation of motion and boundary condition using hamilton's law so actually i had provide i, I have uh, all these uh, examples somewhere we'll just send it so that we can discuss that So what I will do is solution prepared. share here only so this was the problem and okay you cannot this two part is not going away hmm okay. yeah you all can see so okay so uh, the uh, kinetic energy expression is this then potential energy expression is followed and we had put everything in the function of x only so as you can see a is a function of x and m is a function of x uh, sorry uh, ei is a function of x and uh, we we are using integration by parts and also we are cancelling the terms so it's a long procedure and finally we get equation of motion and essential boundary conditions
सो दिस इज आवर गवर्निंग इक्वेशन और इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन एंड दिस विल बी आवर नेचुरल बाउंड्री कंडीशन सो नाउ नेक्स्ट डे बैटमैन इज वर्किंग ऑन इज लेटेस्ट बैट गैजेट ग्रैपलिंग हुक लॉन्चर एज शोन इन द फिगर वेन ही रियलाइजेज डैट ही नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड द डायनामिक्स ऑफ द सिस्टम लॉन्गिट्यूडल डिसप्लेसमेंट इन ऑर्डर टू इम्प्रूव हिज इट्स परफॉर्मेंस द ग्रैपलिंग हुक लॉन्चर कंसिस्ट ऑफ अ बार विथ अ मास एंड स्प्रिंग अटैच टू वन एंड एंड अ कैंटी लेवर टू द अदर यूजिंग हैमिल्टन प्रिंसिपल Batman derives the equation of motion for the system and determines the boundary conditions that must be satisfied. He carefully considers the effects of the mass and spring on the longitudinal displacement of the bar and calculates the natural frequency of the system. So after analyzing the dynamics of the system, Batman makes several modification to the grappling hook launcher that significantly improves its performance with his expertise in structural dynamics batman once again proved that he can tackle even the most complex engineering challenges so this was the problem uh, so it was just uh, it is like low level than the previous the first problem so axial uh, displacement so here what we have to do we have to find first the kinetic energy uh, due to the mass as well as due to the bar just that in the previous problem there was only spring but here a mass is also here so total potential energy of the system is this which is uh, one term is coming from the bar and another term is coming from uh, the spring so solution we can find individual terms and then we will sum it up we will take integral parts and that will be equation of motion and whatever it is left we have to just uh, find which variation it is so that is the um, boundary conditions and more over the natural boundary conditions essential boundary conditions uh, we can uh, observe it just by looking at the problem itself or the looking at the figure itself so here we had used integration by parts and then so finally what will have that this is the finally yeah by using hamilton principle we can get the equation of motion and as well as the boundary condition so if you will see it at, at x equal to l the boundary condition comes out to be a vibration equation of the mass capital m so that was the major part so hence the batman could easily design a grappling uh, hook by looking at that mass uh, the like how much mass he wanted to put okay now once he had made the grappling hook now he need to find the he had to how the dynamics of the swing is moving so he need to swing across the city using massless rod or this uh, the mechanism he had drive that is fixed to the support point now the support point can be moving that's the uh, just of the question so it is moving in this four following manners oh let's see the figure <laughs> using language and mechanics we have to derive the equation of motion for batman swinging on the maxless rod we have to determine the condition under which batman can safely swing across the city taking into account the motion of the support point so i assume that batman mass is concentrated at the end of the maxless rod and that there is no friction between the rod and the support point with this exceptional skill in language and mechanics and this trusty master mm. rod batman is able to save gotham city so this is the first problem 
ओके आई विल शेयर दम एक्चुअली इट इज ऑन रिसर्च गिट ऑल्सो यू कैन इजली डाउनलोड इट फ्रॉम हेयर फ्रॉम देयर एंड ऑल्सो आई थिंक द लिंक वुड बी प्रोवाइडेड इन ड्यू टाइम सो रिसर्च गिट आई हैव माई अकाउंट देयर एंड आई हैव अपलोडेड ऑल माई ऑल दीज क्वेश्चन देयर सो यू कैन टेक इट फ्रॉम देयर I will just uh, okay. So the first problem is where the where he had the grappling hook had stuck. That is moving with a v naught velocity, and uh, so we have to find Langridgian. So this is how we go via that. We'll find kinetic energy, potential energy, and Langridgian is equal to kinetic energy minus potential energy. So similarly. That hook is now going into horizontal left direction with a constant velocity v naught again. So similarly, first we will find mass, positions, velocities, then kinetic energy, potential energy, Langridgian. Now uh, the question says that the grappling hook has stuck a point which is doing a circular motion with constant angular velocity omega. Have to obtain the Langridgian of the mass m. So similar approach again. Now one more variant can be put that instead of now the circular motion, it's a elliptical path. Okay, so just that there will be now instead of r, there will be Uh, parameters like a and b and bain is back so bain designed a destructive device using two pulley arranged as shown in the figure i will show the figure the left pulley is fixed in uh, and the right pulley is attached to the mass m so something like this okay so this is th this is bain pulling and this is langridgian and we have to find equation of motion and uh, we have to use this delta operator so the hamilton principle states that the path followed by the pendulum is one along which the line integral uh, of the langridgian is extremum so we are optimizing the langridgian or finding the first variation so we'll get equation of motion by that okay i think it's another grappling hook batman has a pendulum that consists of a mass m attached to an elastic spring of stiffness k instead of use the usual inflexible string the pendulum swing back and forth under the influence of gravity write the langridgian of the system and find the equation of motion using hamilton's principle so we can idealize this like a simple pendulum with a extension so that extension we are talking about is l and uh, langridgian will be something like this kinetic energy minus potential energy okay so now batman and bain are trying to raise down a hill on a cylinder which is rolling down the bed which is sliding on the horizontal surface uh, that means this thing is happening and batman and bain are at this point now what you have to do we have to do the same thing so langridgian is there then we'll find variation of it then we will do integration by parts and finally we'll get equation of motion okay so i think it's end now so batman and bain are fighting on torus now rolling with the rolling without slipping on a horizontal plane inside the torus a big pearl is sliding smoothly around neglecting batman and bain mass masses use hamilton principle derive the equation of motion for ball position and torus rotation hmm. torus of mass m so this will just form of the question is changed but as uh, you can observe it all these equations are non linear okay 
so next instead of rolling now the, this torus is now spinning about the vertical axis so the language in changed uh, okay so this ends my lecture two hours of lecture any doubt or i will provide the slides so nothing to worry about there i uh, so research kit actually i can give you Okay, this is uh, in chat. I provided the search gate, my profile, so you can go there and download. So it is somewhere. It will be somewhere. Uh, let me share it again. It will be somewhere like this. Uh, Nonlinear comics part one. This was week one. Then nonlinear comics part two. This is week two. Then part three. Now I will upload part four today. Okay, so we will just presenting. Uh, Thank you for joining. We'll meet ne next week. In due time, if you have any doubt, you can message me or you can put the doubt in discussion forum if it's related to the assignment. Thank you. I'm just ending the meet. And recording stopped.